So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, everyone, to uh, participate in this session. Uh, my name is Yaming Fu. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Shanghai Library, and uh, we are super thrilled uh, to be engaged in the DH 2022 in person. And I'm here to present on behalf of Professor Simon Mahoney, who's also here and will support uh, the Q&A session, and also Professor Wei Liu from Shanghai Library. So today, uh, we are going to talk about Shanghai memory as a case study of ideological impact on storytelling, the interplay between memory, language, and stories. So this research uh, uh, presented here uh, builds on our earlier work using digital storytelling to include diverse voices to de democratize the historical and cultural record of Shanghai City. Uh, here we aim to explore the interplay of memory, language, and stories and look into the ideological impact on historical storytelling in our DH project. And in today's presentation, I shall introduce the Shanghai Cultural Collection Project and the Wukong Road Project to share our work in all these aspects. So um, as uh, like GLAM institutions, as repositories for the human record, uh, precise cultural heritage resources that are themselves collections uh, of various forms of human narratives. So they need to find appropriate ways to to be fully presented, uh, constructed, and disseminated. And stories are important elements of cultural heritage. So they play a decisive, a decisive role in collective identity, with people striving to retrieve, validate, make their own history known to others, and have it acknowledged by others. Uh, since the 1990s, the digital turn has brought about uh, the methodological and epistemological shift in both humanities research and also GLAM institutions. The concept and method of digital storytelling uh, as a branch of storytelling finds its way in creating, expressing, interpreting, and sharing stories by digital tools and new media forms. So this provides new possibilities for uh, librarians to engage with narrative content in diverse diverse ways. So in, in this project, uh, at this specific stage, we want to explore the three dimensions, uh, the memory, uh, language, and stories, and to see how they can be interplayed in a historical storytelling project. So firstly, let's look at the memory. Memory is defined as the action of remembering, recollection, and the remembrance. The saying that library are carriers of human memory and social memory devices has a long history. So uh, since 1980, with theoretical research on collective memory and cultural memory, scholars in sociology, history, anthropology, and other multidisciplinary fields have paid a great attention to the interdisciplinary research on memory. So in this process, documents and other memory forms becomes the important mediums in this kind of research. So there are diverse forms of memory materials uh, in the library context. So so for example, like uh, the uh, precious documentary heritage, the photographs, audiovisual materials, etc. Uh, so all these uh, materials shows personal, family, community, collective, or na national levels of memory. Uh, all these memory materials present certain ideology, and here by ideology we mean a, a purpose, a, a standpoint, perspective, or tendency on something, and so inevit inevitably come with a certain level of bias. Uh, therefore, create we know that they are created and communicated by people. So it is unavoidable uh, that confirmation bias exists uh, in those uh, um, when people constructing stories. Um, and uh, so uh, especially regarding this kind of memory and memory interpretations, um, and so therefore, there is a huge need for balance when presenting those memory materials. We want to include diverse voices, diverse uh, standpoints uh, in this process to avoid this kind of bias. 
And another uh, dimension that we look into uh, is uh, the language. So in libraries, as in other social research, language is used by people to exclude and marginalize, as well as to uplift and give a voice. Following a social constructivist approach, language is also a key approach by which people build and engage with infrastructures and ideology, uh, ideologies. And language is, is important to consider in library context uh, because libraries are highly linguistic space. They contain people, texts, information, instructions, and more. So all of which rely on the convey of language. Uh, well, in China, Mandarin is the uh, common language in China, uh, but each region has its own dialect, and each dialect represents a local culture and a uh, actually a, a, like a knowledge system. Uh, so officially, there are 202 living languages in China, which remains impressive linguistic diversity. Um, and so in libraries, we pay a lot of attention to collecting and making use those kind of language materials and dialect materials that can reflect uh, culture, uh, Chinese cultures and the diversity of different regions. And the third dimension that we explore in this project is uh, stories told from library materials. Uh, storytelling refers to the use of stories as a, a unique and innate form of human communication. And well-crafted well stories can communicate abstract and complex ideas in ways uh, that encourage understanding. Uh, effective stories inspire people by creating human connection and emotional resonance. So in the process of investigating and studying human expression and create creativity, humanities scholars have always sought uh, appropriate ways to present, reconstruct, and disseminate human narratives. And the library, as well as other cultural institutions, play an important is part in this. Actually, in our previous uh, our research stage, we explored uh, a lot about using digital storytelling as an approach uh, in the uh, like uh, in DH projects, uh, which uh, you can refer to uh, DH 2022's um, abstract. So uh, to analyze the relationship between uh, the three dimensions in the library context, uh, there is a large amount of memory material that is preserved in the library, reflecting personal, collective, social, and cultural memory. And we need to find ways to reach a balance that uh, can decrease the impact of any potential bias. And language is the principal medium through which meaning is conveyed in the social world. And so we utilize language recordings, a language uh, like dialogue dialect materials to help the presentation of those stories. And stories is treated as a way to attract more audience and get emotional resonance. So all the three dimensions are intertwined uh, together and need to be considered when building historical storytelling projects uh, in a library context. And so now uh, I will move on to the project. Uh, the, the Shanghai Cultural Collection database, uh, it integrates many kinds of uh, memory materials related to Shanghai from 1825 to 1948, including uh, old photos, old movies, uh, records, and audiovisual resources of images and sounds. And this reflect Shanghai's cultural characteristics, as well as the stories and knowledge of characters, institutions, architectures, uh, historical historical buildings, neighborhood, and uh, connecting, with, uh, connecting them with Shanghai's historical and cultural chronology to build a digital memory uh, with unique Shanghai cultural characteristics. Uh, so now I will show you a, a short clip about uh, the website and just to give you like an um, impression of what it is. Uh, so here you can see this is uh, this is the uh, uh, the website and as you can see that there are uh, we provide diverse we actually co uh, collect diverse forms of this uh, memory materials and uh, organize them in different ways so firstly as you can see that they are organized uh, based on the different time period uh, and also based on different genres of uh, those materials like uh, for publishing drama literature uh, music uh, movie etc and so uh, uh -oh. And so users can explore the website firstly by uh, uh, looking at different dimensions of those uh, um, 
memory materials, and they can also explore the resources by uh, different types. So for example, this is the old photo section where they can ex uh, search for, a ret uh, search, uh, retrieve, and also uh, look at the metadata of the, the old photos. And these uh, are the old movies uh, section where uh, the movies are organized based on the title, the actors inside, and also the theaters that is uh, that was that has been uh, like. Um, developed in uh, Shanghai city. So, for, uh, so users can, uh, by this old Shanghai map, they can explore the locations of different theaters. And so this is one of the popular theater, the Huangpu Theater. Uh, so users can, uh, by clicking to it, they can see the metadata of this uh, theater. They can also see the generated knowledge about uh, the, the timeline and uh, the other information. And here is the map catalog, which uh, we uh, provide metadata for for the old maps that uh, we have in our library. And we also uh, generated the Wukong Road uh, website based on uh, all those um, memory materials that is in relate to Wukong Road in specific. And uh, so this website, I've uh, give a very detailed uh, presentation last year, so I won't go into detail. So it's basically, uh, we generated this website based on three dimensions, which are architecture, event, and people that uh, have been uh, you know, uh, lived in this uh, part of uh, Shanghai. Uh, so uh, uh, Wukong Road is actually um, uh, like um, a Wukong Road is in the former former French concession uh, in Shanghai, and it is a very well known area uh, which uh, have many historical buildings going back to the colonial era. So uh, I won't go into the detail, but you, you can definitely explore the website. But I will uh, specifically show you how we use the language that the Shanghainese dialect in this uh, project specifically. So uh, I will play it. 这个大师人一边还是小了 and so this is actually a method to capture the ordinary people's voices uh, uh, and to show the history and uh, culture of Shanghai uh, that uh, in the way of uh, language presentation. So uh, actually, language is closely connected with cultural identity, community, and the sense of self. And Shanghainese remains very popular. Uh, amongst the locals as a way of confirming uh, them as indigenous people. And Shanghainese is not only the domain of the older generation, but also uh, with young people. Uh, and also, uh, it is like many stories passed on by uh, this uh, specific dialect, uh, by this specific language. Uh, so it is uh, closely related to a sense of identity that is formed through the passing of history and culture. And collecting this vernacular sound fills the gap over time and enrich the historical storytelling forms. And so to conclude, uh, when we explore the ideology, uh, ideological impact on historical storytelling, we find that ideology tends to govern a broad range of human relationships and influences the course a, uh, of change in society. And since culture represents the social glue that holds society together, ideology has become the core of many cultures and uh, the organizing principle of the, of the society. So to look back, at what we have achieved in this project, we acknowledge and reflect uh, on the uh, biases within our record uh, in our library that have impacted on the selection process, along with ideological and other uh, consequences to rectify the historical record. And in historical storytelling project, the diverse memory forms reflect the ideolo uh, ideological and social change. And these diverse forms fills the gap in the historical and cultural 
cultural record so that we can ensure that uh, the stories and voices uh, which we have been underpresented in both print and digital forms uh, can be heard. So what's more, ideology has a strong impact on the sense of community and uh, solidity by pulling together personal and isolated experiences into a collective and con whole whole, so which is important when generating historical storytelling in library and other glam institutions. So uh, that's all of my presentation today. Thank you all for listening. Thank you.